What's up everybody? I have some beginner advice as it pertains to purchasing disc golf discs. Hopefully this will help you guys out. I have some I get some questions about this sort of thing here on the channel and I wanted to do just kind of a, a video just in general talking about things to look out for when you're buying disc golf discs. I'm not going to be really going into specific molds so much. You can find over 150 different disc reviews here on my channel and my disc reviews playlist. If there's a disc that you're interested in in particular, just search the name of that disc and add Disc Golf Nerd in the search bar on Google or YouTube. It should pop up. Again, with over 150 different molds, I've tested quite a few and I've reviewed quite a few. Um, but I want to just give you guys some general advice as it pertains to purchasing golf discs and things that you should look out for. So, let's start out with differences in plastic type. So I'm going to put these aside. There's that. Innova different stuff here all right so the most inexpensive plastic types you're gonna run into out there um, I don't have everything represented but I'll show you what I can um, from Discraft is the Pro D plastic that's that right there and then we have from Innova we have DX plastic which this is a DX AVR 3 and then from Latitude 64 it is called retro plastic is the name of the baseline plastic this stuff is the least expensive. Let me adjust my camera. This stuff is the least expensive because it is also the least durable. It will break in faster than other discs. So you see this one's already got some chewed up uh, damage on the bottom there from throwing. This uh, AVR I didn't test very much, but this guy is also Pro D plastic from Discraft. You can see beats in quite a bit, gets a bunch of damage without uh, without really holding up to too much abuse. So, that is why it's so inexpensive, but it's still a good plastic type for you to try out when you're just beginning and you're just getting started out because it'll allow you to try some different stuff and it's very inexpensive. So if you're not sure how you feel about disc golf, you want to get out there and give it a shot, Pro D Plastic, DX, Retro Plastic, they're all pretty good options. Um, they do have a good grip and feel in the hand generally. I like the way they feel. This Pro D Plastic on this disc feels great to me. Um, it will break in faster. It will start to change its flight characteristics faster, but it has a good grip, good feel, and it's very inexpensive. And it also will maintain a good grip in the uh, wetter weather. So if it's rainy out there, this stuff will still have a good tacky grip to it where some of the more premium plastics might not. Then stepping up to more uh, higher quality plastics, you have like the G-Star plastic from Innova. This is a more flexible, more premium plastic to it. It's going to be more expensive. It'll be a little bit more durable for sure or considerably more durable than DX plastic and it has a nice grip, nice feel to it, but you're going to spend more money on this. Same thing with the Star Plastic. This is a, a just basic Star Plastic from Innova. This stuff also has a nice feel to it, good grip. Maybe not as grippy as some DX plastic, to be honest, but it is a premium plastic that will maintain flight characteristics for a long period of time and it'll be very durable. Then you have plastic like the Opto plastic or the Lucid plastic. This is Lucid Air plastic from Dynamic Discs. This is a really great feeling durable plastic that's in a nice light weight. This is Opto plastic from Latitude 64, same as the Lucid plastic from Dynamic Discs. And this is also a very nice premium plastic that has a good grip and it's very durable. Then you have, uh, from Discraft, you have the Big Z plastic. This is also very durable stuff. It will maintain flight characteristics for a very long period of time. So, when you're kind of picking what you want to get, you might want to start with some DX plastic when you're just starting out, or Pro D, or Retro. Uh, something inexpensive so that you can kind of test out some different things, see what you like. Then if you enjoy that disc, maybe then you step it up to a higher quality plastic. They also have, let me grab a couple off the side here. Uh-oh, fumble. Let's see, do I have a champion disc to show you? I know I got one in here somewhere. Here is champion plastic from Innova. This is like a translucent plastic. It's not gonna be as grippy as Star or G-Star in general, although this one feels good, but it's very durable. Very nice and durable stuff. Then you have the ESP plastic from Discraft, which is also a high-end durable plastic. So if you're asking yourself, why are these more expensive than uh, the other plastics, it's just they're a higher quality plastic. They're a little bit more premium. They usually have a nicer feel and they should definitely be considerably more durable over time. As you throw a disc and as it breaks in, it will change 
um, the flight characteristics and it will start to become more understable. If you're unsure what that means, search for my video, understable, overstable, and I will break a lot of that stuff down for you. So that's some of the difference in plastic types. Um, another thing to remember when you're buying discs as a beginner is that used discs are fine. If you have a local shop, generally they'll have a used section. You can find something like this where it's already nicely broken in and it's already going to fly nice and straight and it should be considerably more in, uh, uh, inexpensive because it's already used. That's totally fine. Don't feel like you have to have something brand new off the shelf. You can get used plastic and get out there and learn the basics with it. With one caveat, you have to remember that if you get a used disc, as I said, it will change the flight characteristics. So this disc will be more understable, it will float to the right more, or it will stay straighter all the way than a brand new disc in the same plastic type. So if you buy something used off the shelf, just be aware of the fact that it may fly considerably different if you then move on and buy a brand new one of that same disc. So. Gently used discs are a great way to start. If you have something that's really beat up, you probably want to stay away from that just because it's going to be very hard for you to duplicate that flight because um, if you buy something new off the shelf, it's going to fly considerably different. Another thing to remember um, in terms of buying used discs is if it's an old disc that is no longer available, it might not be the best idea for you to purchase that disc because if you lose it, it will be much more difficult to uh, obtain more of them. Or if you buy just a regular soft magnet or any other, any other production model disc that's still made and uh, in production currently from one of the major manufacturers, if you lose it, you'll be able to buy another one and it won't be hard for you to track down. So, let's talk about some other tips. Um, Usually, I recommend buying backups. So, if you have a particular disc that you like, um, you like that disc for a reason. You like the way it feels, you like the way it flies. So you go to the shop, and they're on the rack at the shop, there's three or four of them in the same color, with the same stamp, or in similar weights, but the same exact color. That's a good indication that those discs were made at the same time. Now, as disc golf discs are manufactured, they will vary slightly in terms of the way they're going to fly based on the run and uh, you know just, just only so consistent plastic can be when it's molded into a disc so if you see two or three on the shelf that are the same color and the same weight there's a good chance they're the same run therefore if you know say you buy one of those you take it out to the course it flies great you really like it you put it in your disc golf bag I highly recommend you go back to the to the store if you can and buy at least one more of those. Put it aside. Now if you lose that one, you have a ready-made backup and go straight in the bag and you know exactly how it's going to fly. That's something that I definitely advocate. Any of my personal throwers that I that I carry on a, on a daily basis when I'm out there on the course, I will have backups of every single one of those. So in case I lose that disc, I can, I can break one out. It doesn't have to be the same color and the same weight and all that stuff. It's still good to have backups either way. But, again, if you go to the store and you see them that are in the same color, same weight, good chance they're the same run, which means they will fly very similar as opposed to mostly similar between two different runs or different colors and that sort of thing. Generally, for beginners, you want to go with a little bit lighter weight discs, although as I've kind of grown in my uh, knowledge of disc golf, I don't necessarily feel that that's all that important. I feel like you can throw pretty much whatever weight is fine, although I still personally tend to prefer drivers that are in the high uh, high 160s, 168, 169 grams or so, 170 is good, all that is fine, but uh, lighter weight discs are a little bit more uh, difficult to control in the wind, so keep that in mind if, you're in a, if you live in a windy climate. Also, moving on, comfort in the hand is definitely important. You want to throw a disc that feels nice in your grip. You don't want to be standing on the tee pad and like trying to make sure you get a, a good grip on it and that it's locked in there and you can throw it uh, on a very consistent level. You know, if it feels kind of wonky in your hand or you just don't like the way it feels, that's not good. You should look for a different disc that has similar flight characteristics um, but has a different feel in the hand. So if you're looking for just a straight flying mid-range, try a couple, see if you can handle them. If you have the ability to handle different golf discs, if you have a local shop or something like that, which is a, a blessing that not, not everybody has a, that available, I understand that. 
part of why I do so many reviews here is to give you guys an idea of what to expect. But if you do have the ability to handle multiple discs before you purchase them, it's a great idea because the, the uh, feel in the hand is important. If it feels uncomfortable or you have feel like you have a hard time getting your hand around it and getting a solid grip on it, that's not a good thing and you might be thinking about that and it might harm your shot when you actually get up there to throw. Other things in terms of buying advice, bright colors. You'll see all these discs are pretty bright colors. This one's probably the most muted um, out of these, but honestly, I, I like these kind of colors. See this nice bright neon, bright orange, great. These day glow is what you call this, like a bright neon yellow. White discs are generally quite nice to find out there. There's not a lot of pure white things in nature, so that will stand out amongst the background. Bright yellow, bright orange, bright yellow. This purple, probably not the best, but it's not bad either. It'll still kind of stand out. But in general, bright yellow, bright orange, and pink are really good colors for your golf discs. So I would I would stick to that and help uh, help yourself out so you're not spending so much time looking around for discs that while you're out there on the course. And finally, for this video, throw what works. Don't be concerned about the general perception amongst the disc golf community of a particular disc. Something like the Innova Groove. Everybody wants to talk bad about the Innova Groove, most of which they've never gone out there and actually thrown one. They're just jumping on the bandwagon. They think it's funny to talk down to people who like to throw them. If you get an Innova Groove or any other disc and you get out there on the course, you throw it, it flies the way you want it to, it feels good in your hand, and you can get more of them when you lose it, then throw that disc and everybody else be damned. Don't worry about the silly kind of uh, groupthink mentality and as it pertains to whatever disc out there. Don't worry about any of that stuff. Throw what works for you. Keep it comfortable in the hand. Keep a nice bright color. Maybe start out with the baseline plastics to enable, until you're able to kind of figure out what you want. And then also... When you're ready, you find a disc that you really like in that baseline, try it out in a more premium plastic. Bear in mind, there, sure, there probably will be differences in flight when you change through the different plastics. Most of the plastics by different manufacturers will have slight variances in the way they fly, depending on that plastic type. Um, it's not consistent enough for me to explain that right now. You kind of have to figure that out over time, but those things will come and no real worries there. Um, Weights aren't as important as a lot of people like to say, but certainly for uh, drivers, usually you will get more distance out of a lighter disc, especially when you are just starting out. That is my buying advice for you guys today. If you have any questions about this whatsoever, feel free to contact me in the comments or find me on Facebook or Instagram, and I will get right back to you. And if you're a beginner, feel free to look through my Disc Golf Tips and Information playlist that I will put on the screen right about now. And you guys can look through that and figure out um, any other information that's in there that might be helpful for you. Thanks very much for watching. I will check you later. Cheers.